Right, ladies and gentlemen, time to wake up, put down your smartphones, close your computers, etc., and have fun. And the only way we're going to get through this is with your help, OK? Uh, and so it's, it's terrifying for the people sitting in front of me to present their project, that their, their little baby that they've loved for years and years, in under one minute. Uh, and, uh, and so they're all scared, and they need your love. I want you to share your love. And so an enormous round of applause when they come on, an enormous round of applause when they leave. And the main objective of them coming up here is really to, it's a teaser. Hopefully what, what you see in the next 15 minutes will inspire you to go and talk to them over lunch. And for the online audience, we've done the work for you. We uh, videoed a uh, um, some interviews with them this morning, and that's going to be screened over lunchtime. So, ladies and gentlemen, please put your hands together for Alfonso. Hello, everybody. Thank you so much. Uh, uh, the need to respond to sexual violence uh, cases is increasing. At the same time, MSF needs staff well prepared to respond to this issue, respecting our patient-centered approach. Uh, we designed a virtual reality simulation to promote the development of medical communication skills in the consultation of sexual violence. Virtual simulation uh, is a great opportunity to train our staff to develop these complex skills in order to provide the best medical care in this context. Also, it can recreate the most demanding interpersonal challenges that professionals face. Interviewing an avatar offers the learning a safe and ethical environment to practice. Even more, offers an authentic and realistic context to fail without impact in our self-confidence. Uh, come to our demonstration uh, and interview Yasmin, uh, our avatar created for medical uh, consultation. Round of applause! <laughs> Kim! <laughs> Kim! Hi, I'm Kim. I'm not nervous at all. <laughs> Years ago, you used to run into the field in MSF, and you didn't care if you could talk to anybody. That's how you won your merit badge. Today, we actually want to have voice calls, video calls. We want to use applications. We want to move data around. And we've begun to work on something that gives you a out of the box, turn the two buttons on solution, that gives you what it is that you need. To that, well, I'm not even in 30 seconds. It's, it's, it's ruined my time. I'm not sure how I'm going to go with this. <laughs> OK. Read the text. Here we go. All right. You ready? Yes. Shruti. Hi, I'm Shruti. And uh, me and my colleague Simon, who's in the audience, have been working with the innovation units to create a new innovation platform. And I've been interviewing a lot of people who are here today and better understanding that we need to create a space where field challenges and support for innovative ideas can be created. As part of this project, we are designing and testing this application, which you see on the screen currently. The idea is that when you're in the field, you can scroll through simple settings and add a problem, a creative workaround, or an idea which you have, and share it with the rest of the community. And the second tab, which you see here, is the Learn tab, or the MSF Instructables tab, where you can put up simple, uh, instructions on some creative fixes which you might be doing. There is a demo space where I am uh, sharing an analog version of this application, so please come and give me your thoughts. Ta -da! Fred. Hello everyone, uh, I'm Frederick, part of the GIS unit based in Geneva. GIS unit provides support in terms of mapping and GIS to the wall movement. So what you can see here is a map. Uh, quite standard map with uh, common epidemiological indicators like incidence rate, like uh, number of cases. So uh, you can also have a look at different AP weeks so to see the evolution of the outbreak throughout space and time. Nothing new, someone would say. But the thing is, this tool can be adapted to any area of intervention within two days through the collaboration between an epidemiologist and GIS specialist. So if you want to know more about this topic, and if you want to know more about this tool, come to see my demo. Ta-da! Okay. Hi, 
I'm Charlotte, I'm a service designer from Royal College of Art. Um, I've been working on quicker, easier handover for the past six months. Thousands of handovers are carried out across MSF every year, and I'm talking about the international staff members who are there for nine months, passing over to their successor. Um, so this is kind of causing a significant amount of time lost in the field, because if there's an ineffective handover, you don't know how to do your job properly, you're not hitting the ground running. So through research with lots of operational and field staff members, 38 in total, we developed a new handover process um, which includes a flexible handover template, a living organogram, and a national staff buddy system, which links international and national staff on entering the field. You can hear more about them come along to the demo session. Um, and these are cost-effective and simple ways to make handover quicker and easier. Um, thank you very much. Ta -da! him all on time, right? So my turn. I'm Lucy, um, to share you with the Rich Project. So when I talk to our colleague in the field or in the OC responding to emergency, they all share with me one thing, they, they lose their time by trying to combine institutional knowledge, they lose their time by trying to have consolidate contact list, contact network relevant for responding to emergency. They often forget to check at social media. So this is where technology can help us. Is it not the time for us to streamline all data activities uh, together and to try to have everything in hand um, on time when it's needed? So MSF Reach comes into life right now. So you can use your phone and you have 20 seconds to catch and to capture the link here. I'm sure you can do it to follow the four steps to submit your report based on your uh, creativity in the work experience that you got. Um, take a selfie for a bit of more fun and come to me to see what's the display on the platform. I will explain you how AI can help your work. Let's work together. Ladies and gentlemen, the must two of the, <laughs> the mobile unit surgical trailer. So some of you might have heard lots of things about it. You might have heard it's a game changer. You might have heard it's an expensive toy. You might have heard it's a future. So, is it all of that? Is it none of that? Is it some of that? <laughs> so, uh, my name is Michalis. I'm a Watson with OCB. Together with my colleague Olivier here, we've had the pleasure of uh, being in part of the team that uh, developed and supervised the production of this beast here. What it does, it's 12... Um, mobile, trailer, mobile uh, shelters that can be deployed almost anywhere in the world, providing high-quality surgical care, respecting speed, autonomy, and flexibility. It has supplies in it for 30 days of operations. So all you have to do is add diesel and water, shake very well, <laughs> and in less than a day, you have a hospital running. Uh, me and Olivier will be very happy to answer any questions for you. We also have a VR tour for you to look. Come see us. Hey, what's going on, guys? I'm Julian from Brussels. Um, so Sherlock, first, Sherlock was born from the following uh, observation. The support that we provide to our logs on the field it can be quite rigid sometimes, and for the following reason. Um, the support that's provided is really in a top-down manner. Um, it's often geographically based, and we're not making most we're not making use of the expertise that is already present on the field and the experience that is present on the field. Um, and working in such silos can, can, doesn't allow us to maximize and capitalize on the realized projects. And so this is what Sherlock is trying to, uh, to solve. Sherlock offers a knowledge base where any, any experts can provide and update document, the reference documentation. Users can provide feedback on the documentation. And then the second part is an, a community where any members can share any experience or realized project and ask and answer each other's question, valorizing everyone's expertise and experience. Yay! I'm an Hello, good afternoon, everybody. I think if anything has become evident during these days is that data guides all of our emergency responses. The only difference is, is that we need to do it within a limited time frame, we need to do it quick. So data as acquisition is one thing, but actually getting to the place where we can interpret our results and communicate it and know what we do, for that we need to do analysis, and for that we need to pass through the data forest. And the data forest is a fascinating place. 
It deals with messy and incomplete data. There's no funds for software. There's a lack of consistency. One epi comes in, one goes out. Wrong methodologies and complex presentation of data that nobody understands. Hence, the R Epidemics uh, Consortium that gathers 70 experts from 40 organizations uh, where we develop efficient, reliable, and real-time tools uh, for <laughs> epidemiological investigations, report generation, and forecasting. Uh, and we also disseminate uh, knowledge by training. So do come visit us in the break or visit our website. Um, we're also open source and free, everything we do. Ta-da! Hi, I'm Neil, I'm a uh, pediatric doctor. The problem with pediatrics is that we treat a lot of babies and babies are really small. Um, and, uh, which means that their veins are also really small and sometimes really difficult to find sometimes. So we often spend a lot of time stabbing them instead of, you know, for hours on end to try and find a vein. And uh, in high income settings, there's a machine that costs about $300 uh, that we use to find the veins. Um, but I realized that actually you could use a, a bicycle light, your rear bicycle light, which costs $1 on Amazon. Um, and what we did was we did a study where we took photos, we jumbled them up, sent them to pediatricians to, to rate the visibility of the veins, and they found that actually it was just as good as the cold light and it works in all skin colors. Um, so I don't make any money from this. Uh, you can buy on Amazon from several different retailers. Uh, don't use the flashing setting, use the... Uh, <laughs> I'm also Neil, <laughs> and I would ask you to uh, know your patients, uh, know your daily workers. We are building a, and testing a mobile phone, but offline capable biometric ID platform that will allow you to anonymously uh, register patients and also recognize them on their return. We will not be storing the biometric data, iris scans or fingerprints on the device. Uh, the system is uh, GDPR compliant uh, and also comes with an API to interface with other programs you may be working on. So this will give us better ID, improved operational efficiency, better patient outcomes and faster reporting. So please pull your finger out and come and get fingerprinted at our stand. <laughs> Uh, some of our staff choose to go and work in areas where the threat of chemical warfare exists. Um, I was one of those people last year, and when I came back, I designed this personal decontamination kit. Um, on the outside is everything you need for initial protection and initial decontamination. On the inside is relevant documentation that you need to read. Um, <laughs> inside there is uh, full decontamination, and built into the top when you're naked after you cut your clothes off is uh, a spare change of clothes tucked into here as well. Thank you very much. Yeah.